The concept of upcycling has been around for ages. It just didn't have an official name. It's kind of like recycling, except instead of breaking down components, you're actually repurposing them, increasing their value. And can be a lot of fun. It's basically just taking broken or underutilized items and putting them to work, giving them new life. Like this basket, you could line it and use it as a planter. Or take a look at this bottom of a metal roasting pan. It'd be perfect for putting candles in it. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Well, today's show, as you guessed it, is all about upcycling. We're gonna be taking a look at the kitchen, the garden, and looking for ways to upcycle. Even taking a look at chickens. They're great upcyclers. We're gonna have some fun. Let's take a look. When it comes to upcycling, my friend Jerusalem Greer is such a pro. From meals to found objects around her house, she never shies away from a project. So let's see what she's got going on now. One of the parts about being a good steward and living sustainably is that we love to upcycle. We don't like anything to go to waste if possible. So um, I'm even taking to patching sweaters that get holes in them. Um, I use little bits of fabric left over from other projects or little bitty doilies like you see these lovely vintage doilies but no one knows what to do with them anymore because no one puts doilies. Well, a lot of people don't put doilies. I'm sure some people do. Um, so I've started using old buttons and doilies and fabric scraps to upcycle my sweaters because I get a lot of holes in my sweaters. <laughs> so that's one way that we upcycle. Also, we recently built a doghouse out of pallets. When we had flooring delivered for our house, um, it came on these huge pallets. And so we didn't want to just burn those or throw those away. So my husband took them all apart and built a doghouse out of them. So those weren't wasted and it was free materials. So that was one way we upcycle. A lot of our furniture um, is things that we've upcycled that we found on the side of the road. Actually, I'm a big fan of, of rescuing. I say I'm rescuing furniture. Someone had thrown out basically the wooden inside frame of a box spring. So we just brought it in, cleaned it up a little bit, leaned it against the wall, and we hang all sorts of things on it during the year. We hang different decorations. I hang my stockings on it because we don't have a mantle anymore. And so it's a really fun, unusual piece that, again, was just gonna be trash going to landfill somewhere that we've been able to use in our house. Um, I like to rescue things, and things do double duty. You know, we actually have a workbench right now that's our, our entertainment center, you know, like a workbench that would be in a barn or that sort of thing. So we really do like to take either upcycling by repurposing or just kind of renewing things that have been discarded or salvaging things that maybe people would usually give away um, because of their flaws and turning them into something a little bit different and better. When the weather is beautiful and the scenery is gorgeous, who doesn't enjoy dining outdoors? And hey, you could get so creative. Take a look at this table setting that I put together where I've upcycled a few things that I've had around. You can see that I'm using this wonderful royal blue enamelware. It looks so vintage and fits in the farm setting. Now, if you take a closer look, you'll see that the tablecloth that I use is a yellow gingham and the underlay is white. The upcycling side of this little project was taking the chandelier that I found in a vintage store and I've used it as really a display for more daffodils. We don't really need candles out here, so instead of candles, I use these votives, fill them with water, and then place daffodils in them. I also use some of these galvanized pails, upcycling those and filling them again with daffodils. Anytime I have guests, comfort, is the first thing I think about. So when it comes to chairs, I chose some of these folding chairs. They're lightweight, easy to move around, and because of the natural wood color, they fit in beautifully with this particular setting. So guests will enjoy not only the beautiful view, the great food, conversation, but also a little fun and whimsy.
When you think about upcycling, the first thing you think of is probably not some sort of meal. But there are old favorites that we all have that maybe aren't quite as healthy as they could be that could be upcycled into something that is healthier and delicious. For instance, let's take one of my favorites, Eggs Benedict. I love it, but that hollandaise sauce is pretty rich in butter. And if you think about the meat, there's alternatives for that as well. So in this recipe, what we're gonna do is get creative with the hollandaise sauce. You're gonna love the flavor. And as a substitute for the meat, we're going to look to quinoa, which is high in protein and dietary fiber. Now, to get this delicious recipe started, you wanna bring the quinoa and water to a boil in a large pot on the stove. Once boiling, reduce to simmer and cook for 15 to 20 minutes until all the water is absorbed. Pour it into a large mixing bowl. And here's where you'll add some asparagus. Okay, now for the hollandaise sauce. You wanna rig up a double boiler if you don't have one. I've just taken a large saucepan and a small skillet here, which is quite adequate. And what you're gonna start with is the no-fat Greek yogurt. And what I have here is one cup of no-fat Greek yogurt. And I'm gonna add the yolks of three eggs. And then I have minced garlic, one clove, of minced garlic and two tablespoons of a Dijon mustard. I'm gonna take my whisk so I can really get this going together and I'm gonna take a half a lemon, squeeze all the juice out of it. Now, of course, we wanna season this and what I want you to do is take a half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of just a little raw sugar, half a teaspoon of paprika, beautiful color, and half a teaspoon of thyme. You could use ground or just whole thyme leaves. And then a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. So you're probably wondering, how do I know when it's finished? Okay, so the thickness is nice. I just wanna check the flavor here. Hmm, that is really good. This looks just about right, so I'm just gonna push this off the heat. We're gonna let that rest for just a moment. Now it's a matter of preparing the eggs. This goes very quickly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use farm fresh eggs, of course, because we're here and we have lots of eggs. The girls have been busy lately. And we're gonna take um, the three whites from the eggs that we use in the holiday sauce, and we're gonna add two whole eggs to it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of oil here just to put in my pan, not much, just to kinda and it's already sort of preheated here. Okay, and then now I'm gonna add the eggs. Here we go. And I don't know about you, but I don't like my scrambled eggs overly done. I like them a little runny. In the interim, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of this hollandaise sauce, I'm gonna add it over here to the quinoa because it adds such a nice flavor. Just gonna mix all that together a little bit. And now it's just a matter of taking the eggs and just wanna put these eggs here on the, on the center of this presentation. And then I'm gonna take the hollandaise sauce and pour it over the eggs and the quinoa and asparagus. I'm just gonna finish it off with just a little bit of fresh tomato. It's an upcycled idea from a great old American recipe. Enjoy. You know, Lisa, natural solutions and cures has been, well, very popular for a while, but now it's sort of moved into the range of backyard poultry. It has. Antibiotics have been so overused for such a long time, so if you do some natural stuff, especially yeah. going into winter, boosting immune systems and helping with respiratory problems, it really can help. And yeah. it's, it's not expensive and it's not difficult. And you've been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we're going to start with some basic ingredients like apple cider vinegar. So in a two and a half gallon waterer like this, how much vinegar would you add? A tablespoon a gallon. So you're looking at two and a half tablespoons. Okay. And just like when people drink it, it helps your digestive health. 
It's an antiseptic, it can help balance your pH, and it also helps keep the water cleaner so algae doesn't grow and bacteria doesn't grow in the water. Right. What else helps bolster that immune system? Well, garlic, just like in people, garlic is really excellent for your immune system. And how many cloves per gallon, um, roughly? I'd say a clove or two a gallon, so put a couple in here. That was a really big one, though. It also helps prevent mites and lice because um, those kind of biting insects don't like the blood of chickens that have had right. garlic. Okay, the little, so little vampires don't that's like right. the garlic. So you would do this on a regular basis through the... I do it year-round. Year-round, and how Probably frequently? twice or three times a week. The rest of the week, you just go pure, just go pure plain water. water. Mm -hmm. Plain water, okay, cool. All right, so what are we talking about here? Feed. Feed. Good layer feed is really all your chickens need. But again, to keep them really healthy and, and out of the vet office, there's some things you can add to the feed. So if you want to put that in our bucket. Sure, okay. Um, I usually mix up a whole 50 pound bag at a time. Right, so we've got three ingredients, all natural again for the feed. Another way to apply the garlic is in a powder form. Right. If you don't want to use the cloves, you can use a garlic powder. And in a gallon of feed, you want to use a half a cup of garlic powder, and for the same reason. Okay, and now we're, we're going to do the probiotic now, We're right? going to do the probiotic powder. Yeah. Probiotics are like eating plain yogurt for you. Sure. Good for your digestive system. Yeah, I take a probiotic every morning. Right, yeah. and it's basically the same. It helps the digestive system. It helps them absorb more of the nutrients and bigger eggs. Healthier gut. Healthier gut, better right. body weights. So same thing with this, a half so a cup. Half a cup. Now, this next one is one that I've used before and it really works. This is food grade diet to make sure. Right, you have to make sure it's food grade, but this also keeps bugs out of the feed and it also is really nutrient rich. You want a half a cup of that as well. So this is your standard Year mix. round, year every, round mix. I feed the ducks exactly the same and chicks. Okay, well I was gonna ask that because what we've talked about here will work for birds of all ages, day old all the way to adult. Correct, it's all natural and it's safe and it really starts your chicks off really well. A lot of people don't have a vet or access to a vet or can afford a vet, so sure. if you can you know, start your chicken's off right. Use these preventatives. That's right. All natural all things that you can pick up. Yeah, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Great. You're the chicken homeopath. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>
this stem, you can get these at your at a local craft store. So I just dip that in a little bit of glue. Right. Ah, I felt it go in. There you go. Look at that. Ah. <laughs> and maybe you can pull out a little bit of the curls just a little bit. But there see. you are. Yeah, that is marvelous. Look at that. Now, what I love about this is, I mean, you created a whole bouquet, but I'm going to turn some of these around because uh, you've actually applied color to them. I really like the natural white color of those, but people have asked me if I could dye these, and this is just some food coloring, a few drops okay, in, a, sure. in a little thing of water, oh, and I just see. dip them in, just stand it up, let it dry for an hour or so, and you're good to go. What I love about this bouquet of flowers is when you never have to water, and they'll never will. <laughs> never have to water. Uh, they're non-allergenic, because it's maple, and uh, they make great gifts for someone. You don't have to, have to maintain them. Well, you know, from a botanical standpoint, this would be a flower I'd have difficulty identifying. <laughs> well, they're just fantastic. Thank you for sharing your technique. You're quite welcome. <laughs> You're really talented. I just love them. The easiest way to upcycle any meal is to add a delicious sauce that complements the dish. And these sauces don't have to be complicated. Here's my good friend and talented chef, Alexis Jones, to break down the five mother sauces in a way that makes it easy for us to understand. Today we are covering the five mother sauces. They are the basis of most French sauces, and they are simply a fat, a flour and a liquid. And so our first one is bechamel. Bechamel is a white roux. It's equal parts flour and butter and milk. And it is the basis for um, sauces for lasagna and macaroni and cheese. And you can make cheese sauce just by adding Parmesan or Gruyere to it. So we'll add a little bit and now it's Mornay. And our second sauce Velouté is very similar to bechamel. It's also started with a blonde roux, so equal parts fat and flour, and then you can use a white stock. It can be chicken, fish, or vegetable, as long as the bones haven't been roasted. Third, we have espagnole. Espagnole is also called brown sauce. You start with a brown roux, so you're gonna cook the flour and butter until the roux is mahogany consistency. Um, and from here, you'll add either a beef or veal stock. So it's used a lot for meat sauces. And fourth, we have hollandaise. Hollandaise is one of the only mother sauces that's actually used as is. Hollandaise is thickened with egg yolks. So it's egg yolks and clarified butter, and then it's finished with lemon. The butter is clarified by cooking it and skimming off all the milk fats. You can um, change hollandaise to bernays by adding chervil, tarragon, and shallots to it. So we'll just add that in. And bernays is used a lot on steaks, asparagus. It's really um, a fancier version of hollandaise. And you can use white wine instead of lemon if you'd like, but that'll stop the cooking process. And our last sauce is tomato. I've got shallots, carrots, celery, and some red peppers and rosemary. And we're gonna take our Juliette tomatoes that we have roasted and came straight from the garden. So we're just gonna add this. We've already cooked down our vegetables to get a little caramelization on them. And add a little bit of chicken stock to it. You can use vegetable stock if you're trying to keep it vegetarian. And then we're going to go straight into the food processor with it. All right. Tomato is probably the sauce you're most familiar with. All right. You can add a little heavy cream if you like, but I just think it needs a little salt. 
And now you have your basics for your mother's sauces. When you begin to think about upcycling, you discover that the options and opportunities, well, they're endless. Like take a vase like this, be perfect for growing an orchid in it. Or take corks from a wine bottle and create a bath mat. You see, you're only limited by yourself. Use your imagination and come up with some fun things that you can repurpose in your own home. So the main thing is just to get out there and have some fun. We hope to see you next time. I'm Alan Smith. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Today's... All right. <laughs> All right. Okay, here we go. Stand by. And action. You see, it's as simple as taking a broken or underused... I... Ah, sorry. The concept is really simple. You should... <sighs> Look at this. Sign, apartment for rent. You could put this on your neighbor's house.